My life is nothing but a continuing amount of failures that will eventually even out to a success. Hey! So I saw one of these Twitter templates going around and I decided to do one and after I did it I realized, wow that was a waste of time. So then I thought, how would I waste that time with a video that is entirely subjective and serves no purpose other than to have me do something that requires minimal effort so I can produce more content? <gasps> so that's what we're doing. Look, you know this, I know this, we both know this. You're gonna disagree, you're gonna get mad. You're gonna say something in the comments, I'm not gonna read them, so let's just move on. There are currently 24 monster types in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, so I'm gonna list my favorites from all of them, and briefly talk about why they are my favorites. But because the casual audience has the attention span of a goldfish, I'll just tell you right now to subscribe if you want more, like the video, follow the socials, do the stuff, do your taxes, get vaccinated, please do actually like and subscribe so that I never have to use TikTok ever again. Uh okay. So in no particular order, just purely alphabetical, uh, we start with Aqua, with number 101 Silent Honor Arc, aka 101 Shark. Nice. A lot of the cards in this list are just cards that I like that fit the type. I completely forgot 101 was even Aqua, but it makes sense now knowing the guy that plays it in the anime. It's just a classic Grand 4 toolbox card that changed the game completely, and I like Xyz, so why not? For Beast, I have Melfi Caddy. Now, if you know this channel, you know I like Melfi's quite a lot. Technically, I like Puppy more because it's the most impactful one out of the two Melfi monsters that are good. But I like Cats more, so suck it. And what do you know? For Beast Warrior, I have Tribrigate Fractal. Now, if you know this channel, you know I like Tribrigates. Mm. A lot of people and I thought that Tribrigates were just going to be a complementary engine when they were first released, but a lot of people also had hoped that it was going to become meta at some point, and it was mainly because of Fractal. Then we got Tribrigate Kid and Bear Brum, which added the fourth body and made Revolt searchable, and in the end, Zoo became the complementary engine. So thank you, furries, for creating this apocalyptic crossbow wielding centaur with the gorgeous flowing mane. Staying in the dangerously furry territory, I have Salamangre Gazelle as my choice for Cybers type. How fitting. I like almost every Cybers archetype, and Salamangrates are one of my favorite archetypes of all time. Please watch how to get into Yu-Gi-Oh with Salamangrates or whatever. And yeah, Gazelle makes the deck work, even with Stalio at 1. Now I picked Gazelle over Stalio because... Imagine an alternate universe where the now historic January 2020 ban list Konami decided to ban Gazelle, but leave Stalio and Circle at 3. I believe the deck would be dead, or at least non-functioning. And in that alternate universe, I'm dead. That's the correct timeline. For dinosaurs, I put the classic Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, UCT. Do I need to say anything else? It's the boss monster of the entire type. For Divine Beast, I show Slifer the Sky Dragon. Now, I was never a really big DM guy, but Dual Monsters did hook me in, like everyone else at my age. With Obelisk being objectively the best one, and Raw getting a crap ton of support, Slifer seemed to be like the weakest one. Technically, Raw was the weakest one out of the three before all that support, but Slifer always had a really good floodgate effect, and had the coolest design in my opinion, so yeah, I chose him. But personal taste aside, we all know who the best Divine Beast monster is. That's right, it's Big Ballin' Jr. Evil Swarm Ophion is my favorite dragon, simply because Evil Swarm Ophion is also one of my favorite cards of all time. That'll probably be another video. Who just so happens to be dragon type. A close second that's closer to the typical Yu-Gi-Oh dragon would be Gaxi Ice Photon Dragon, simply because I like the deck and the card, which might be a future episode, who hilariously enough does counter Ophion, except that won't happen because Ophion won't let it come out. And that's why I love him. Boy, I'm really being suggestive in this part. Lancia is my favorite fairy because although I don't really like a lot of fairy based decks, Lancia is the one fairy I run in every deck I play because it's such a strong side deck card. And it just so happens that artifacts are the only fairy based deck I like, except that barely matters because to me and everyone else, artifacts are just big swords you set and pop to ruin your opponent's day. For Fiends, I'm putting another Evil Swarm, because I love Evil Swarm, and this is my list, so fuck you. 
It's so funny to think about how people hate Zeus now when Evil Swarm Exiton Knight was Zeus before Zeus, and it was also evenly matched before evenly matched. Unfortunately, but thankfully, power creeps the bitch, so I can now have this beautiful sweet bug boy at 3. I never really care much about fish type, honestly. There isn't a single fish deck type I like. I do like Gishki, and Gishki Abyss just so happens to be fish type, so there you go, shark tail looking ass. Cyber Dragon Infinity might as well be like UCT and be the boss monster of the entire machine type. Because of it and Nova, the magic level for any machine deck is level 5. I just love this card, I even love its design in its every version. But it always irked me that a fusion deck designed to go second would get an XZ monster, especially one this powerful. But then they got a link monster that makes them go second even harder, so I guess it's fine. For insects, I have Max C. Now, this is obvious, especially coming from a guy whose whole channel name is a reference to it, but I love Maxi. At the same time, I never wanted to be TCG legal ever again. It's the only card in the game that I can think of that doesn't stop the opponent with this effect inherently, but resolving the card brings the duel to a physical halt. And that's powerful. Truly special coming from a bunch of anime cockroaches. From here I just start losing Andres in most of these types, so just bear with me. Plants to me are hectic and boring. I think I touched Predator Plants once and hated them, so my favorite plant is just gonna be another Evil Swarm, Mandragora. It's an easy to summon level 4 that's part of my favorite archetype, so there you go. But my favorite real plant is Basil. He is a pretty boy. Time Teeth Redure is my choice for Psychics. It's just a great generic rank 4, and Time Teeth actually do work very well with Evil Swarms. Can you sense a pattern here? Flamvel Urukisas, more like Uwu Kisas. That sucks. Surprisingly, not a lot of pyro types in an archetype made out of dudes on fire. But regardless, I love Flamevel's early on and even in the Tag Force games. And Urukisa that it's time in the meta as a good generic level 6 synchro before Goyo Guardian. He is hot. Despite Octoax being a reptile deck that works well with Snake Rain and is Egyptian mythology themed and I'm a slut for Egyptian mythology and I love snakes, none of them compare to Danger Tsuchinoko. I mean, look at this motherfucker. Look at him. I'll die for this guy. I'll let him kill me. Also, Octoax suck ass because Konami was too careful with them, so... <laughs> So, Pot of the Forbidden is a rock, I guess. I just love the design of it, and I just love the card. I used to play a lot of Prediction Princess in the past, simply because this card worked extremely well with them, and it was the best way to resolve its effect. And it's so fun to resolve, honestly. I like to think stuff like this inspired Triple Tactics talents, as in having multiple effects from banned cards in a single card, but put it behind a very specific, but relatively easy to activate condition. I don't really give a shit about sea serpents, but I really do love Abyss Dweller. Sorry, Mermail players. Doomstar Magician is not a good card by today's standards. It's not even a good spellcaster at that. It was a bad Wavering Eyes before we got Wavering Eyes. But this is one of those few cards where I don't care. Because he looks so fucking cool. I love this card's design. I love his artwork. I am not joking. I'm in love with him. I love this edgy wannabe dark magician that just hates pendulums for some reason. Ah! And while looking him up for this video, I never realized he has the big dipper in his vest. Oh, he's so fucking cool. Oh, ah! I'm simping. Oh man, I'm simping. Next is Thunder Dragon Colossus. Man, I miss Colossus. Before Thunder Dragons, the Thunder type was pretty much just Hunters and Watts. So pretty much just a joke. Thunder Dragon Colossus and the rest of the Thunder Dragons made people actually respect the Thunder type. Kinda like how Adam Emancipators later did with Rocks. And yeah, I don't know if he could ever come back, but if he did, it would be so cool. I just wanna play Dino Thunder again, man. 
Phoenix Gearfried is a warrior, but he's also a Gemini, which immediately disqualifies him from any form of modern playability. However, this choice is purely sentimental, as when coming to the US, the first deck I ever owned was the Warrior Strike Structure deck. As a gullible 12 year old boy at the time, I just picked the one that looked the coolest, not knowing how bad Geminis are. Thankfully, the game taught me that the hard way. But by being 001 in the set, it is technically the first real Yu-Gi-Oh card I've ever owned, and still own to this day. And for that reason alone, I still love it a whole lot. And I love the upgraded version too, because it's not a Gemini, thank god. Man, I really want to do a favorite cards of all time list. Do let me know in the comments if you do want to see that in the future, because man, I could really talk about this for a long time. There are quite a few Wing Beast decks I've partaken and liked in the past, but because I'm as predictable as a Steven Universe episode, I just picked another classic rank 4 toolbox monster, Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer. Now if you know this channel, you think I picked something like Phantasm Spiral Dragon as my worm of choice. But if you actually managed to sit through that awful 40 minute video, you'd know that the good version of the deck doesn't run Spiral Dragon. So instead my worm of choice is just good old True King Lithosagem the Disaster. I miss playing this guy in Dinosaur and just sniping in Utopia so they couldn't kill me with the lightning while also going like plus 3. Now with Diagram to 1, he's not as great or impactful, but I was still happy to see him come back to 1, hilariously enough in the same band list that killed Stalio. And lastly, Zombies. Zombie has a lot of decks I like actually, Vampire, Zombie World, Skull Servant, my current favorite being Eldritch and all of its variants. Golden Lord was my first choice because I actually do love the deck and also just look at him. He's the least threatening thing ever, but he exudes so much power. Like my man's flexing the wrists, flexing his bling while posing like a stereotypical mummy. However, I was then reminded of the Ghost Girls. With the exception of Ogre, all the Ghost Girls are zombies, and all of them have their own strengths to them. So I personally have to give the Undead Throne to Ghost Bell and the Haunted Mansion. She has my favorite artwork out of all of them, both the original and the alternate, and she has my favorite effect out of all of them, despite Ash Blossom objectively being the best one. So there you have it, about 24-ish of my favorite monster cards in all of I may do this in the future with spells and traps and maybe with extra deck monsters. Or maybe just talk about generic cards I just really love. So thank you for watching, if you do want more please subscribe. Make sure to watch the latest episode of Getting to Yu-Gi-Oh! Follow the socials for extra stuff and alright bye!